There are four basic steps of building a decision model in Excel that you want to use Solver to find an optimal solution. You need to identify the objective, and we call the objective function. What is the goal? You need to define the decision variables. What are the things you can control that will determine whether or not you meet your objective? You need to identify all the constraints, the things that keep you from doing what you need to do. And then you need to write the objective function and the constraints as mathematical expressions that you can code into Excel. This is the uh, chapter 13, problem five. And we're talking about the LAM developer that wants to build condominiums. They've got a 40.625 acre site. The restrictions, uh, the zoning restrictions, only allow eight units per acre. That's the density control that's common in zoning. And they can build three types of condominiums, a one, two, or three bedroom unit with cost of four fifty, six hundred, and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars respectively. They tell us that the profits, the units generate a ten percent profit. So that tells me that if I build a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar unit, I will generate 10% or 45,000 profits. So it's just saying that the more money I spend on units, the more profit I'm going to make. They say they have a budget of $180 million, and their experience tells them that they need to have a certain mixture of one, two, and three bedrooms, 15% one bedroom, 25% two bedroom, and 25% three bedroom. So that's what we're given in the problem. We're asked to develop a linear optimization model, and we want to come up with a optimal solution. And there's some key words here if you're paying attention, and I hope you are uh, when it comes to exam time. This is a linear optimization problem. It's not a integer optimization problem, and that's a key difference that I'll show you uh, in a, in a few minutes. And the last part of the question is, uh, in essence, if, if we can increase the budget, uh, what does that do for our profits? That's the way I interpret that. So let's look at a setup. Go to another sheet here. There's our problem again. And the way I looked at this, um, we have to identify, the, first of all, the objective function. I, I start with that. I know the text says starts with, with your decision variables, but mine, mine works a little bit different. I want to know what it is that I'm trying to maximize or minimize, which you're always trying to do in a linear optimization problem. And in this case, the thing that jumps out at me is I want to maximize my profit. And how do I do that? Well, profit, as I said earlier, is 10% of the cost. So I can think of the profit as 10% of the number of the one bedrooms, type 1s, times their cost of 450, plus the number of type 2s, the two bedrooms, times their cost of 600,000, and the number of type 3 times it, their cost of 750,000. So my profit is 10% of the cost, and I want to maximize that profit. So the way I would approach it, I'm going to let x1 be my first division decision variable, and that's the number of the type 1, the one bedrooms, x2, the two bedrooms, x3, the number of three bedrooms. So if we state our objective function as a mathematical expression, I would say I want to maximize profit, and that's equal to 10% of the cost, and that's the number of type 1s times 450 plus the number of type 2s times 600 plus the number of type 3s times 750,000. So that's pretty logical. Maximize profit, and that is our objective function. Now I want to decide on my decision variables. Well, the things that I can control are the number of each type of units. So that. It, those are our decision variables, and th those are what we will vary in the solver solution. And I'll show you that on the next 
uh, tab. Finally, we need to come up with the constraints. You know, what limitations uh, are imposed on this developer? Well, the first thing, we can't spend more than a budget. And we can state that constraint mathematically as the total cost is equal to the number of type 1 times 450, 2s times 600, 3s times 750,000. That total cost has got to be less than or equal to the budget of $180 million. That's, that's the, uh, the budget stated in the problem. Second restriction is the zoning restriction. We've got 40 acres, and we can have a maximum of 8 units per acre. That means the total number of units is equal to 8 times 40.625 acres. And for my mind, it works better if I rearrange that and I say that the total number of units divided by 8 has got to be less than that 40.625 uh, acres. Okay, the next constraint is that the one bedrooms, the type 1s, must be 15% of the total. And showing that as a mathematical expression, X1, the number of one bedrooms, divided by the total number of condo units, X1 plus X2 plus X3, it's got to be greater than or equal than to 0.15 or 15%. Similarly, 25% of the units must be two-bedroom, type 2 or X2. And it, mathematically, that's X2 divided by the total number of units, X1 plus X2 plus X3, greater than 0.25. The final restriction that I get out of reading this is that 25% of the three bedrooms, it must be three bedrooms. So that's X3 divided by the total it's got to be greater than 0.25. So those are our constraints. One thing that you need to know when you're building a model is that the more constraints you add, the more difficult it becomes to maximize a, a profit or minimize a cost, if that's uh, what your objective function is. Um, in essence, if, if I added a sixth constraint here, more than likely, my objective function, the maximized profit, is going to be lower than if I run it with just these five constraints. And that becomes important when we talk about integers in, in just a second. So here's my setup. Now let's actually put that into an Excel model. And I try to be as simple as I can, but make it obvious uh, to someone that's looking at, at uh, my model what I did. And I said over here in this first column, this is my objective function, This the first part of the spreadsheet. My three decision variables, X1, X2, and X3. I've got the number of each of those types there, and then I created the total, total, of course, of those three numbers. I've got the cost of each unit, which we were given, 450000 600000 750000 Total cost is just the number of units times the unit cost. And then I sum those up to get a total cost. And the profit is just 10% of this cost. Total profit is the sum of the profits on each of the units. And, of course, mathematically, 10% of the sum of these is equal to 10% of that total. It works either way. So you could set it up either way. I just put one in here just so my, my uh, model would be fleshed out, and uh, I want to make sure. One thing I, I want to remind you of, when you're doing Excel, uh, I like to have my spreadsheet set up that it will automatically calculate. So whenever I change something, everything downstream changes. And the reason, to my mindset, is I don't want to change something and then think that my uh, bottom line is correcting or adjusting. Um, it won't do that if you're set to manual recalculation. And you, the way you control that, go to, I think it's formulas. There it is, calculations, options, and I click on automatic. By default, Excel seems to want to set it to manual so that you manual, have to manually recalculate. And I, like I said, I don't like to do that, so I always double check to make sure it's set to uh, automatically recalculate when any cell is changed. Okay, so now we, we've got the models set up. 
I put down here my constraints. And the reason I do this, I think I've said it in, in one other example I gave you all, was that um, it, when you start adjusting or playing around with a model, you may want to go back and adjust some of these constraints. You know, we may want to change the budget. And I can see right there, you can see I was playing around that. Our budget is $180 million. Whoops. Put another zero on that. So that's our budget, $180 million. And our constraints, uh, 15%, 25%, and 25%. Total acres, now for this, this problem, that's not going to change, uh, 40.625 and the zoning restrictions won't change. But I just get in the habit of doing that because uh, in other situations you might be able to go back and play around with these various uh, decision variables or variables that impact the decision variables and uh, come up with a different solution uh, by having those constraints changed. <laughs>